Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy YouTube Blue coming back at you again, man. So, as y'all heard um, last night, uh, the Cowboys did re-sign J. Ron Curse, um, which, thank God, I had a I had to teach my skate class last night, so I didn't get a chance to uh, to do the video last night, so I'm doing it now. Um, but yeah, so I was kind of waiting for this to happen because I was one that said on on many different platforms, even on Mark's channel, when I chimed in on his live stream I was like yo they need to sign j-ron um j-ron is one of those guys that is a, a a system guy right um there's players out there that can play in any system there's there's guys that are average in different systems it just depends on how the person is and how um their play and how a coach is willing to play that guy right um if you know your guys you know your guys right and J. Ron just fits what Dan Quinn does so well, which is why I'm pretty sure he didn't he didn't command the money on the, the open market like he wanted because the Cowboys allowed him to go out in free agency and see if somebody would want him. Um, but he didn't get that money. And I, I know that was probably upsetting for him, but he still got a hell of a pay raise from the Dallas Cowboys, considering that he was a seventh round draft pick. Most most seventh round draft picks don't even make it in the league as long as he's been in the league. Um, and he's been with multiple teams. Now, you know, he played for the Vikings. You know, he played for um, the Lions. Both teams, he was a rotational, situational guy, mostly special teams. Um, and he was also on the Ravens practice squad as well. Now, that was short-lived, had a cup of coffee with the Ravens, and, you know, the Cowboys picked him, scooped him up after that, and we know what happened after that. So, if you didn't know, J. Ron Curse's original um, salary was $1.1 million, which is the veteran men, and um, I think they gave him 137000 that's it, in guarantees. Just 137,000 in guarantees. For for a regular person like that, you could give me 137,000. I'll be good right now. But you know, for a football player, <laughs> you know that's that's chump change, right? But for him, he's a seventh round draft pick, so he wasn't expected to make buku money in the league, right? So even this contract that he got last night is a hell of a pay raise to what he was making before. So you're talking about him going from a one-year contract with the Cowboys, 1.1 1 uh, mil minimum salary for a veteran, and only 137000 I say that loosely, 137000 guaranteed money. Um, again, compared to his constituents and his colleagues, that's short money. But again... I, I think that the reason why a lot of teams probably weren't really looking at him because they, one, they thought that, oh, they didn't think about him because they were like, oh, the Cowboys are going to definitely resign him. He played well for them last year, and I'll give you his numbers in a minute. Um, he, he played well for the Cowboys last year. They're going to resign him. They'll be stupid not to. Um, he was a reliable safety for the Cowboys, and we haven't had a really good safety on this team in a long time. Jeff Heath was the closest that we really had, and some of you guys dogged the shit out of Jeff Heath, even though... I love Jeff Heath. I will always love Jeff Heath. I think Jeff Heath is, you know, I I, I kind of miss Jeff Heath. Um, yeah, did he take bad angles sometimes? Yes. But he's a guy that you shouldn't have on the field 100% of the time. You know what I mean? That's why he, he did good in the system when there were other, when we had Barry Church and when we had other guys that were there, even though Barry Church was a box safety, so it's a little different. But with J-Ron, they use him in the box as well. So he can play that versatile role under Dan Quinn's system. Because you remember when we got J-Ron last year, um, at the beginning of last year, he was not, um, nobody, we didn't look at, because even I said, I, I was okay, he's going to be, he's going to be a special teamer, core special teamer, blah, blah. I didn't think that he was going to play like he did. But, last year he played 88% of the defensive snaps. A lot of people don't even realize that. 88% of the snaps on defense. Um, so right now he signs a two-year deal worth up to 10 million that's a hell of an upgrade from that 1.1 mil for one year that he got last season so he's on a two-year contract now um uh, 10 million dollars and with his incentives his incentives are probably gonna be um you know practice um game bonuses um 
healthy bonus, workout bonuses, things of that nature. And that could be up to 11. So he can make up to 11 if he's available and healthy and things of that nature. So like I said, he played 88% of the snaps last year. He led the team with 101 tackles. He had 10 pass breakups, two interceptions, and seven tackles for loss. Not bad for a guy that was a core special team guy and a guy that um, for any, any other team wouldn't have played that many that much on defense. So that's a good thing. I like J. Ron. Um, he works with the Cowboys well. I love his energy. I love how he talks ish with the other teams and the fans and other teams and stuff like that. Like I love what J. Ron brings. Um, I, I'm excited about the signing. Um, I know that a lot of fans are mad because we didn't make a big splash in free agency. But I warn you about making big splashes sometimes. Just because you make a big splash and you sign a bunch of players don't mean that it's going to necessarily work out. Look at what the Eagles did. Remember when they had Chip Kelly and that so-called dream team that they had when they signed all those players? That shit ain't work out. They didn't win the Super Bowl until Doug Peterson got there. So I'm just saying. Um you also can't have a stake on every plate because there is a salary cap. You know, everybody be like, oh, the salary cap's a myth because this, that, and the third. No, it exists. It's just that, you know, teams ain't trying to get fined, so they they making sure that they get under that cap. But shout out to Jay Ron getting that, getting that payday. Um, that's a big bag for him being a seventh round pick. So shout out to him because he wasn't expected to do that, nor was he expected to be in the league this long. Because like I said, being a seventh round draft pick, these guys come and go. Some Sometimes they get drafted in the seventh round and don't ever play for a team. So shout out to him for being in the league this long. I think he's been in the league, what, since 2016, 17? Um, forgot the year he was drafted. He was 16 or 17. But either way, he's been in the league that long. He's still here. He's still churning. And he found a home with the Dallas Cowboys. So shout out to J-Ron. Well deserving of, even though it's chump change to the Dallas Cowboys, it works well for them. It works well for him. He gets his money. They get their guy. The fan base is a little happier now. Now let's go get Bobby Wagner. Now, a lot of people wonder why Bobby Wagner is not, um, you don't hear about him. You don't hear about teams interested in him, stuff like that, because he doesn't have an agent. He doesn't have an agent. He's just like, um, who else is like that? Uh, Richard Sherman, like Richard Sherman. They represent themselves. So hopefully the Cowboys could get it done. I don't think we could get Zadarius Smith because if he denied the Ravens contract. Now, I don't know why he denied the Ravens. It could be, if it's because of the money, Cowboys not giving them what the Ravens offered him. So I don't know why he would deny that money to come to Dallas unless he just really wants to come to Dallas. But let's just be realistic, guys. The, the, the Cowboys are bargain bin shopping. And that's just what they do, and it is what it is. So, I mean, ain't no use to crying over spilled milk at this point. But, you know, we'll see what happens, whether it's a Darius. I, at this point, I'd rather get Bobby because you got Dante Fowler. So you got somebody to kind to help that. I really think this linebacker position is just as important. Um, if you get Bobby Wagner, that helps out uh, Micah Parsons. You got Leighton Vander Esch for depth. You got Jar Jarrell Cox, and then you can get the rest in the draft. Um, and just figure this out. Maybe we could get an offensive lineman, a uh, veteran guy like uh, Tressler or whatever, and then figure the rest out in the draft. Now, that's all I got for right. Oh, yeah. Forgot about Dalton Schultz. So, say so he did sign his his franchise tender. Hopefully, the Cowboys can get a real deal done so they can get some money back off of that as well. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section about the J-Ron curse. Um, uh, Resigning and things of that nature. I'm excited that he's back, at least. But... Um, in the meantime, be trying to like, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get this content. It's your boy E2 Blue, always keeping it real.